beautiful Sagittarian friends and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020 where this month Sagittarius we've got a very movable month it's birthday time for you so happy birthday as well this is the month Sag that I feel like we're able to take a deep breath and get ready for some real forward motion and I just actually love the vibe for Sagittarius this month because it's very optimistic. I mean, even we've got a Jupiter-Pluto um, conjunction that will come together again, but Jupiter, your ruling planet, conjuncting with Pluto, your spiritual planet, all of them traveling with Saturn, your financial planet in the general, that's very optimistic for the month as well. Mercury coming out of retrograde, Mars coming out of retrograde, Neptune coming out of retrograde, and our last lunar eclipse for the year happening down in your seventh house. So shaking up those relationships a little bit, but more so asking you to be mindful of what you're saying, what you're thinking in relationships. So really not a month that I feel like Sagittarius, you need to run and hide. It's one that I think is quite joyful, especially because we're rolling in birthday time. As well, Sag, this month we've got the Eat and Greets, which will continue on and we'll have Omari Martin will be here, um, Demetrius Bagley, Mecca Woods, Vanessa Montgomery, Judith Hill will be here, Matthew, we met Jezebel will be here. It is just a really beautiful loaded month of people who want to come share astrology with this community. So I hope you don't miss out on any of that. And remember, you can always check out the Eat and Greets ad free on Patreon. All of that's in the description box down below. All right, Satch, let's get in here and see what's going on. So right at the beginning of the month, we have got Mercury coming out of retrograde in the energy of Libra. Now, this has been working your 11th house. Now, keep in mind that Mercury has already been through Libra. It's already been through your 11th house, came all the way into the 12th house, and then went back over. So I would ask you, you know, in the 11th house area of friends, groupings, social things, including social media and things like that. Where have you had this expansion? And now you're having to maybe rethink some conversations. You've been reviewing those. You've been reviewing contracts. You've been maybe going back even within yourself to have some time to think about what you'd like to put out at that social level. But more so than that, I feel like the 11th house, especially right here in front of birthday time, is so much about your long range plans and goals and designs and who and what you want to be known for in the world because you want to be recognized in the 11th house. So this Mercury energy here, I think, has been making you rethink what do you want in this particular area. More specifically, who do you want to do that with? This is Libra energy. So relationships, what organizations do you want to be connected with? Who did you work with this year where you were like, that was really fun? or And you're like, or who did you work with where you're like, no, thank you, pass, hard pass for me. You know, like what has been your experience in your intimate relationships, your organization relationships that adds to that long range goal for you. Now, as Mercury is direct, you can start to go out and make those connections and bring those relationships in a little bit more tightly so that you can have the social area be what you want. If there have been friendships or organizations or associations or plans that feel like they just don't fit anymore, I hope that this Mercury direct will now give you the courage to go ahead and let those go and form the next vision, okay? On the 10th, we see um, that Mercury that's now direct moving forward again, like really getting into the into the movement of his own motion, moving forward again into Scorpio, which lights up your 12th house space. So in the 12th house, this is the stuff that's hidden, but it's also the place where you go to rest right before birthday time. So this is literally as, as Mercury's here, what I see for you, Sag, this month is like, Man, you know, maybe maybe rest a little. Have a mental rest. Have a mental diet. Just cool out for just a minute and allow yourself a second to breathe. But I also think that Mercury here in this 12th house, again, there's a lot of space where, you know, what Sagittarius wants going forward has been happening in this 12th house space. And now Mercury is direct so you can make some decisions about maybe what you wanna work on that you can bring out as Mercury moves forward into your sign. I also think in the 12th house space, if there are creative projects, research, um, People maybe even from the past who you've needed to make decisions with or have conversations with and they're coming forward. This may be that lovely energy where Mercury allows that to happen. Mercury direct in general, you know, if you need to sign contracts or do any of those things, plan your trip, whatever it looks like, you're in a lot better space to be able to do that at this time. Now on the 12th, we're going to have Jupiter, your ruling planet, coming together in that conjunction with Pluto. And this will be the third one that we've seen this year and the last of the year. We saw it in April when they were both direct. 
June when they were both retrograde and again now. But this has been lighting up your second house. So this is about finances. This is about value. This is about self-esteem for you, right? And sometimes that's that confidence that you have, Sag, can really like get flicked and it, it takes a it takes a little bit of a hit. Or we come to the next place in our development and it's like, whoa, this landscape is super new. What is my self-confidence here? You know, how am I holding space for myself? But either way, as Jupiter and Pluto come together, they teach us that we have this inner strength to meet challenges in our lives and really be successful with it. And it's fast. It happens, right? It's it's quite rapid. It's almost like a vortex of energy and then it's gone. But you're left working on whatever you've created at that time. So I would ask you to go back to April. What did you create around your finances, around using your creative talents to go out and, and make money? money, passive income streams, even around your possessions and things like that. Have you been re-looking at what you actually need to live comfortably and to possess? What do you possess and how do you possess yourself? What did you start back there in April because then you reviewed it or brought it to some kind of little transition in June and now it's coming full circle and that thing should be ready to rock and roll and truly you are not as easily defeated in this area, I think, anymore. It's like you've tapped this unsuspecting, hidden inner resource that maybe you just were not sure was there, but through the year you've been able to see that um, play out. So now the expansion and the ability to take something creative and make money from it or make value or esteem from it is absolutely at your fingertips. On the 14th, we're going to see Mars coming out of retrograde. Hey, motivation comes back online. Movement forward motion comes back online. Now, in the energy of Aries where Mars has been quite comfortable, so working very well forward or backwards, direct or retrograde, it's been in your fifth house of play, of, of children, of projects and and the way that you express the way that you take a risk around something but more so than anything in the fifth house it is a house of of genuine desire it's a house of you know what do i want so as mars has been retrograde i think in this fifth house area you have been asking that question in the area of children in the area of doing my own thing true love taking this risk what do i want here what is my desire here or the things that I've been working on or the way I've been working on them? Do I desire to continue to do it this way? And whether I do or I don't, what's my strategy, Aries, to get it done, to move it forward? And either way, looking at the way you've been using your energy in this area of your life has been a real evaluation as Mars has been retrograde. And it's like it's been all this energy building behind the dam and you can and either let that energy out as Mars comes out of retrograde and be completely aggressive and go out there and just kind of tear down some things or you come out of this Mars retrograde in this area of your life ready to stand up and be the Sagittarius you said you wanted to be with the strategy you said you wanted to apply very assertively this is the assertive not aggressive method and some people in our planet are gonna come out aggressive they just are, as Mars comes out of retrograde, we will see aggression. And if that is your path and your plan, you need to do that. But if not, what's your assertive strategy forward in this area that you can really take advantage of and assertively create in this realm? Help your children create. Create that college fund that maybe you didn't have there. Create the space where you're just saying what you think and what you experience. It's your own self-expression. On the 15th, we've got a new moon, which happens to be a super moon in the energy of Scorpio. So again, bringing home some energy into this 12th house space. It is genuinely right before birthday time. So as you use this moon in that 12th house, plant your seeds of intention. What feels good to you to, to bring your rest and your rejuvenation back home? What feels good spiritually to you right now? What feels good and what is your passion and your desire to have in your projects or things that you're working on behind the scenes? You know, do you have a passion for helping elderly, working with animals, something with children or people in spaces of isolation? Do you have these ideas and these um, desires that have maybe been hidden for a very long time and you're you're asking this moon to give you that that depth of transformation and courage to bring them out to the surface or to transform situations from the past even right whatever it is at this new moon just ask for the help 
plant your seeds of intention and let's watch this thing um, unfold over the next four weeks. Just on the 21st, we have Venus coming into Scorpio as well. So she will magnetize this area. So truly what you're asking her to bring harmony to over here, she is going to try and do that. I also think that because Venus is a relationship and financial planet as well, Truly making money off of spiritual material, you know, uh, reading spiritual material, investing in spiritual material, maybe something that you're doing in this 12th house space. And again, relationship from the past. What's happening here? You know, who are you? Somebody out there is working on this relationship from the past. What's happening with it? Are you healing it? Are you trying to let it go? Are you trying to bring closure to it? Please let me know in the comment section down below what you're doing with that, that particular relationship. Now, also on the 21st, we've got the sun into Sagittarius. So how Happy birthday, my fellow Sagittarian astrology soulmates out there. I've got a Sag at my house and we are so pumped about this year, about a 2020 birthday. There's just something so special about it for you guys this year. You know, it's been an interesting year, but I don't think it's that. I feel like this birthday year, the world has had things happen, but it's let you see Saggies that truly in the way that you go and you and explore this world, you're taking yourself out beyond your fingertips in a way that I don't know that you would have done that if 2020 hadn't unfolded the way that it did. But there's been something special happening to Sagittarius very specifically this year. Not to mention you've got the nodes over there, you know? So really this detachment this year of how Sag has been in a willingness to move forward and expand out and go travel. And travel is a big word and a vague word right now but see the world and move in it in a way that's really different. I just am so, you know, happy to celebrate your birthday this year with you because I just think you're so beautifully different and taking us someplace that we just haven't seen before and taking you and your family and your projects someplace you haven't seen before. So happy, happy birthday on that day. Rock it out for the next four weeks and for your solar, solar year, okay? Now on the 29th, we've got Neptune coming out of retrograde in the energy of Pisces. This is your fourth house. So I think that when Neptune is out of retrograde and doing its thing, we're able to access the between the worlds very easily. And we need to be able to do that because we have to create things here and then make them tangible. But when Neptune is retrograde, my experience of it is that things get very concrete and it is not as easy to dip in between these fantasy worlds. It's like, boom, it's here. It's on my table. It's very concrete. Let me look at this from all angles and say, does this fit my ideal? So over this last handful of months, I think you've been looking at your home, real estate, property, domestic spaces, things with your parents, your own internal foundation to include how you're taking care of your health, including mental health, Sagittarius, and saying, does this route of caring for myself and caring for this area of my life fit my ideal, right? Can I, can I fit the ideal here? And as you've looked at that, you've either come up with, I think, a yes or a no. I don't know that there's very many strong maybes in this area right now. Even just your house, you're like, does this house fit where I think I can do the work I need to do? But as Neptune comes out of retrograde now, you've had your yes or your no, I think, in this particular area. And now you get to go back into being able to access this in between the worlds. You've seen the true from the false, seen it in a very concrete way. And now you get to create what's next to align this area with your ideals. And Neptune will definitely help that happen. Now, Neptune's still Neptune. If there are things that feel vague, um, your ability to go to spirit and kind of go to ground but go to spirit and ask, I think is a little bit easier at this time because you have gotten some clarity around this domestic area of your life. And so now as you go, you go with different questions available to have the answers and the truth kind of laid to you. It's really a beautiful energy, I think. Now, as we close out this month, we've got our last lunar eclipse for the year happening in your seventh house. This is a full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini. So seventh house. Okay, the full moon tells us something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we will definitely be creating a shift here. And this will be around relationships. But more specifically, I feel like in your relationships, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, including your open enemies, right? What I think here is that it's really around how you're communicating and what you've learned. Gemini, what have you 
you learned in your relationship? How have you communicated in your relationships this year, most specifically over, you know, this last six, seven months? What's been showing up in your relationships and how you're communicating? Because sad words mean things. How you say things means things. Asking for what you need means things, right? Gemini is a mutable energy, the same as you are. So the ability to not just have to worry and have anxiety, but instead be able to talk it out, ask for some help, um, say what's really going on. Sometimes our mutable energies can be a little bit guilty of bottling a little bit more. And so expressing, there's just this whole realm of expression and how you also let people talk to you is really big. And I think we'll test some of these relationships at this particular time. Now, if you did have something legal going on and you were trying to make decisions, this lunar eclipse over this next six months, I think will give you clarity of details and allow that thing to end. You make your acknowledgements or you can make your adjustments in order to move this particular area of your relationships forward. I definitely think for some of you, um, if there is a marriage um, on the table that's coming, you know, in this next six months, this Gemini energy here will also help you be like, okay, look, we don't need that at the wedding. Cut that out, right? Like that's just an additional expense or they're charging us too much for something. So it'll actually help you in those details as well. All right, Sagittarius, happy, happy birthday. I think it's going to be a beautiful a beautiful November, but really a beautiful year for you to explore beyond beyond your fingertips, beyond your eyes, and beyond your wildest dreams this year. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe, my beautiful friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, Sagittarius.